today's video, I'm going to be working on um, upgrading the living room space here, doing some DIY work, as well as adding some key pieces that I've been waiting for for a while. If you haven't already seen the first video, you should definitely go check it out. So we did a bunch of, um, you know, DIY transformation. So we added, you know, a floating shelf. We added a slat wall, built a couch. We're going to be adding some new pieces. We're going to be replacing some old pieces. And we're going to be fixing some issues that we had with the first, you know, setup. So the first setup, we had um, initially mounted the TV kind of off center, but there was a reason for that. So we were uh, supposed to put uh, a floating shelf right next to the TV, but it didn't really work out the way we wanted. So in today's video, I'm going to be adding an electrical outlet behind the TV, because I initially ran um, a power cable through the wall and apparently it's against code. So I'm going to be fixing that by adding an electrical outlet behind the TV. Also added an Xbox console to the living room. Besides that, we've also added uh, a floor mat to the space to make it a little bit more cozy. Something else we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding some shelves that we picked up from Ikea just so we can mount up, you know, some photo frames and, you know, things like that, anything that's similar. There's this one blank space, you know, right next to the slat wall that we added to the living room, the accent wall, uh, and that space, we uh, saved it for that purpose. And we didn't finish it up with the first video, so we're going to be adding those as well in this video. Lastly, we're going to add some artwork to um, a blank wall we've got. I also got rid of the LED strips that I had underneath the couch because honestly, it just didn't work out as well as I had hoped, especially when we added the carpet to the living room.
All right, so now that we're done with the upgrades, I'd love to give you guys a quick tour of the space. First up, we've got the entertainment center. We've got the automated roller shades with black fascia from budget blinds at the very top covering the high window. Thankfully, it can be controlled using remote, voice, or app, which is great for ease of use. I've made it a part of the smart devices I've grouped together in the living room for easy control. Below it is a 75-inch Sony X85J 4K HDR TV. It used to be off-centered, but now it's the centerpiece of the space after repositioning the wall mount. It's also now plugged directly into its very own in-wall power outlet installed behind the TV, as opposed to passing the power cable behind the wall, which, you know, actually might be against code. It's not an OLED TV with as much richness and contrast, blacks and overall color, but it's got great features for both gaming and watching movies or even TV shows. I've also added an Xbox Series X to the room mainly to use the HDMI 2.1 inputs on this TV for 120 frames per second 4K HDR gameplay, and it also comes in handy for social gatherings. The Series X is an Halo Infinite limited edition console and it works great for gaming. I've got two controls that I use with it. The first one came with the bundle and the second is an all white control I picked up off Amazon. I use rechargeable batteries on a Razer wireless charger to keep the Halo Infinite controller fully charged at all times and I use regular batteries and replace them when they die out in the all white controller. There is also a Govi Wi-Fi LED TV backlight installed behind the TV which comes with a camera which you have to install on top or under the TV. It then tries to mimic colors being shown on the TV amongst other features like setting up scenes, schedules, app, and voice control. Some people might not like RGB lights that much, but this one increases the immersive feeling from using the TV, I promise you. The in-wall outlet is from Casa and it can be controlled using voice assistants like Alexa and Google Assistant or through phone apps like the Casa uh, Smart App. I use a smart feature to set up schedules for when the TV or Govi light strip must turn off or to control the flow of power to them using voice assistants at any time. I'll also let you guys know right now that it doesn't work with Apple's HomeKit or Siri, but it does work with Amazon's Alexa and Google's Assistant. I've also got another smart LED strip installed under the floating cabinet and that can also be voice and app controlled using Alexa and Google's Assistant. This one is generic and I found it on Amazon as well. It was very inexpensive and was a lot longer than what I had there before, so it really fit under there a lot nicer. Alexa, turn off TV stand light. Okay. All the smart devices in the living room coupled with a Sonos One second edition speaker allows me to add Alexa voice control for all of the devices in the living room. The speakers are also great for playing music while hanging out in the living room and also using stereo mode with another Sonos in the kitchen. Here's examples of some commands I use with it. Alexa, turn on living room. Okay. Alexa, turn on big screen gaming setup. Okay. We've also added some decor pieces like the black see-through flower vase on one side and a large floor vase to the other side of the entertainment unit. The floating cabinet is from Ikea and it's called a Besta wall-mounted cabinet combination with white lap vacant doors. We picked up two sets which we needed for our four compartment build, which we also did in the first video. The goal was to create the cleanest look possible for the entertainment center with no wires visible, and I'm glad I was able to achieve that. The newly added coffee table is called Evo and it's from Structube. I fell in love with it as soon as I found out the top side pulled up and towards me. It's called a lift top coffee table and it comes in white, black, or walnut. We bought ours in white to complement the white TV cabinet as well as the kitchen island top. There's also a storage compartment Apartment below when you pull the top side away as well as a single drawer for more storage. We spray painted the legs from silver to matte black to align with the house aesthetic of little to no chrome color anywhere. The lamp we replaced the old IKEA one with is called Northbrook from Strug Tube as well. We wanted something that was smaller with a stylish look and a gold finish which would fit this space better and this was the one that fit that bill. I used the same smart bulb I used with the old lamp so voice and app control was already set up and once again I could control it with my Sonos. The couch is a Dresden modular sectional sofa from Rove Concepts. We had to pretty much wait 6-8 to eight months to receive it but that was between the end of last year and early this year. So maybe the you know shipping situation for the world has improved by now. It's a nice couch with a modern look and feel to it and I love the little walnut console you can add to it. The rug in the living room is natural and it's called a Laloy Haze Pebble from Rog and Weave. We got ours in approximately 8 by 10 inches, there's other sizes as well. It's got a multicolored neutral look and a pattern that I believe works great with walnut, gold and matte black. I feel like it adds a little bit of warmth to the space and doesn't make it feel as cold as it felt before. 
Above the couch, we've also added three art pieces from Wayfair with very similar patterns. They all have minimal geometric lines and circles, gold finishes, and neutral colors to match the couch. Mountain wasn't difficult, but always make sure to do your calculations beforehand to make sure they're straight and evenly spaced for a professional look. There's also the slat wall corner with a 28-inch Mondo chair and side table, which has now been discontinued at Urban Barn. It doesn't take up much space, but the thin metal armrests make it very uncomfortable to use. From Urban Barn, we also got a Bishop throw in caramel with hints of ivory and blacks to fit the aesthetic of the slat wall behind the chair. It also means there's a cozy blanket for us to use in the living room at all times. To the right of the slat wall, we've also added a picture and decor wall to display important items or moments. It's pretty empty right now, but over time we'll fill it up with you know great memories and cool home decor items. We mounted six Monsterland shelves from IKEA and made sure to line everything up as best as we could for a clean and seamless look. The dining room table and chair are also from Roof Concepts, and once again, colors like black white and walnut were selected to add to the overall aesthetic of the entire house. We finished up the long wall with some greenery from a large fake plant we picked up from Artie Planto. There's a large treadmill behind the plant which is only there temporarily so the plant will end up being moved further back and there's going to be more space in that corner. I'll add links down in the description below for anything I've talked about or used during the upgrade. Overall, after adding the new pieces and fixing some old issues, this space already feels a lot better to spend time in and everything works together in perfect harmony. I'm always on the lookout for better tech and things that could help make the space even better, but for now, I'm loving how everything turned out. That's all for now. Let me know down in the comments section what you guys think about this entire setup. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it as well. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. It's Tommy with Minus Tech, and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Alexa, turn off living room. It's okay.